no, take two, I guess. For some reason, YouTube didn't want me to go live. I don't know why, but it booted me off. Wait for some people to get on. Just kind of want to go over uh, what I got going on with the Chevelle. A little update with what we're where we're at with it. What's next and whatnot. Hopefully some people get on. We're at 35 seconds and still nobody. Sometimes it takes a minute or two. Still nobody? One person. What's going on? Uh, one time. Anyways, I'll tell this one person that's on here. I just want to kind of update everybody what I got going on. I've been really busy, so I haven't really been able to post any videos. Um, so I figured I'd hop on tonight and kind of update everybody what I got going on, what's next, uh, where the Chevelle's at, and whatnot. So... Today, I had to work at the mill all day, got off, kind of tidied up the shop. I got to finish up a side job that's behind me, and then uh, next weekend, we'll be, uh, we'll be working on the Chevelle a little more. Make sure you guys comment when you get on here. Make sure you can hear me. Make sure it ain't in and out. Uh, there's no echoing or anything like that. I had YouTube on a little bit ago, and uh, I tried coming on here, and it kicked me off for some reason. It, well, I was on there for like two minutes and it kicked me off, but. I gotta figure out to, um, uh, a lot of people were wanting to, we had quite a few people on the last live feed when Greg was, but, uh, they, so it wouldn't allow them to come. Uh, Seth was one of them. Um, I had a handful of people like, hey, we wanted to comment on the live feed, but we couldn't. So I'm trying to figure out <clears throat> what you got to do. I've always been able to comment on everybody's stuff. Uh, but um, for some reason, my live feeds so far have been kind of uh, kind of tough. So if you're on here, that shows that there's two people on here. Please comment so I know that the comments are active. Hey, just been working on my junk today. Just finished up. The feed's cutting out a little. Okay, thanks, Michael. Let me, uh, give me just a second. Boom, boom, boom. Let's try this. Let's try that. I turned my Wi-Fi back on. Sometimes the Wi-Fi works fine and sometimes it doesn't. Um... So, is that any better, Michael? What kind of... It's good. Cool. What kind of car do you got, Michael? It looks like a Camaro from the profile picture. Um... I don't know if you follow the channel much, but I got a 70 Chevelle, twin turbo Chevelle. And, uh, been kind of, kind of building it the last three years. It was a nitrous car before and we, uh, we decided to switch it over to a, um, turbo deal. So it'd be kind of a learning curve. Nice. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this car, um, it was a nitrous car before that, um, is basically the same motor. I changed the cam. It's kind of high on compression, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get away with, uh, just kind of running a low boost, uh, 20, 20 pounds, maybe max kind of deal. Um, 25 maybe, uh, just kind of depends how happy it is, but it's a 546 cubic inch, uh, deal but it's got a billet bryant crank got aluminum uh grp like billet rods uh 18 degree um dart 385 heads and then i just switched it all it's all fuel injected now uh 
twin 80 millimeter. Um, we just got some punk ass like um, Borg Warner turbos on it for now. Um, I I was basically sponsored the turbos, so that's what we're using, and uh, I know they work good. Uh, they've worked good in the past for some other friends of mine. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, it's kind of a budget deal. Um, aside from, you know, it doesn't sound like it, but it's taken me a lot of years to save all this stuff up. The car got taken apart three years ago. So, um, I've been kind of just in limbo, just saving up parts and putting stuff together uh, when I can. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of turned into what it is now and I get, hopefully I'll get a few more people on here, uh, so I can kind of show everybody what I got going on next weekend. It's going to be kind of a big step, uh, with the car. I'm going to be going up to Greg's house, a friend of mine's, and, uh, we're going to get the fuel cell made, uh, the exhaust plumbed out the fender waste gates put on uh, i gotta get a throttle pedal put in um and then uh the uh transmission cooler tank in the trunk and so that's kind of what the next step is and that will be next weekend uh, i'll be loading it up probably like thursday night and as soon as i get off work friday i'll just burn up that's uh, like two and a half hour north spend a hard weekend trying to get uh, all those little things buttoned up and then I can start plumbing the fuel and uh, doing that stuff. I still need a measure for push rods. Uh, things have been kind of tight financially. Uh, I got to finish. Uh, uh, let me read this real quick. Mine's a budget deal blow through. Oop, nope, come back. I've only got a few hours on it so far. I'm just working at the bugs before I take it to the track. Heck yeah, that's about what I have. Minor Borg Warner's uh, uh, 80s. Um, and we haven't fired it up yet or anything. It's all brand new. Every stitch of the car, I've rewired it all. Um, new transmission, new rear end, new everything. So it's a completely new car, just a body. That's why it's kind of taken me like three years to build it. And uh, without the help of my buddies and all that stuff, if you follow the channel enough, you'll kind of know the story. I'm not going to get too far into that, but um, yeah, it's it's been kind of a ongoing long battle uh, building this car. Every time I get a little bit of money saved up, I'll buy some stuff. I'll you know trade out some stuff. The chassis and all that stuff got built by one of my good friends, and uh, luckily he did most of it. Uh, for trade and stuff like that. I tried to supply the materials and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, definitely interesting. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're tough. They're a lot of work, man. Um, so it's got link ECU fuel injection. Uh, on it and uh, hold on just a second <clears throat> sorry about that guys uh, it's got link ECU fuel injection on it they're a big supporter in uh, my program uh, my friend Seth's program um, they helped us out a lot with uh, some product and and in return, we're going to hopefully be able to kind of help them get in the drag racing world. Um, so far, we've, we're about two years into assess program with uh, Link ECU, and uh, it's been great. The data is second to none. I mean, they have so much data. Uh, the sky's the limit. Whatever you want to know, as long as you have a sensor um, or you want to diagnose problems or anything like that uh, if you know how to do it it's doable same thing with any sort of like dump valves or you know uh, not to mention anybody else's name but like holly you can use their uh, in v5 i think you can use uh, 
the bump button as a scramble button as well. Well, Link EC, you can do the same thing. It's all, you can have as many tables as you want. Uh, uh, the sky's the limit. Um, it, and then the new EC that's coming out will even be better. So it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And uh, once the, once it's done and running and stuff like that, uh, my channel, I feel like, will kind of grow at a pretty decent speed um, because it's really relatable what I do. Um, the car is the car is uh, relatable. It's uh, it's a steel body car. It's nothing too crazy. It's uh, the chassis is bitching. Like my buddy Greg did an awesome job on the chassis. And then all the work around it hopefully is good. We've uh, I wired the car and all that stuff, like I said, and hopefully uh, hopefully we'll just continue to keep growing with the car. Uh, I'd be crazy to think that we're just gonna be able to kind of go right after it right away. But we've been pretty successful in the past with some high horsepower cars like this, so hopefully we'll be able to kind of just hit the ground running with it per se, and. Uh, Try to work out all the bugs and all that stuff you know that every new build has but uh yeah i just kind of like i said i've i've been super busy i haven't been able to upload any videos here lately just because i haven't been working on the car a whole lot i mean i've been out here tinkering on it i finished up the coil harnesses the sub harnesses off the coil uh and then wired it into the um output to the ecu so i got that done uh here and there and then i've also been uh working on another side job uh that's that car in the background there wiring it all up so um hopefully i'll be able to finish up it up uh tomorrow it's uh all but done i need to do like a, the tail light harness still um it's all ran and loomed and heat shrinked back i just gotta terminate everything to the tail lights and the fuel pump and then the bottle heaters and stuff in the back so uh <clears throat> that's kind of what i've been up to whenever i'm not working i've been trying to work on that deal um because uh the chevelle at this point doesn't make me any money so i've been trying to just pick away at what i can and can't do like as far as side jobs um things are going to get kind of crazy busy here pretty soon with work where i'm not going to be able to take on as many like big side jobs as i want to do this year but uh in return i should make some pretty good money uh, at my job nobody's common except michael taylor he's uh Hopefully some more people get on here. Normally, I usually get about 10 to 15, 20 people on here. We carried 30 people on here the last one that we had. But I know it's kind of a short notice. I didn't really plan it or post, give anybody any uh, update on when I'm going to do it. I just figured that today was a good day to do it since I had to Chevelle out. Uh, it's been up on jack stand for the last three months pretty much uh since the tin work got done and all that stuff i've been like wiring it and whatnot and then like i said next weekend uh next weekend we're going to be heading up to greg's and get all the fuel cell and all the other little fabrication stuff that needs to be get, getting done uh which is a humongous step i'm super excited for all that stuff uh it should it should turn out good i hope i mean greg does awesome work so I don't think it's going to be bad. Let's get some comments in here, guys. I know there's only three people on here, but what do you guys want to see? Uh, um, I'm uh, Like I said, it's just Saturday night. I worked this morning. Um, got up super early. Got to work. Now I'm just having a couple beers. Kind of trying to unwind. And... Uh, just wanted to get on here and update everybody what we got going on.
So I got a good question. What does everybody think? Um, so this car, I'm going to guess, this car was 3,700 pounds before. It was, it was like 30, no it wasn't, 3610. 3,610 pounds. Uh, no, no, uh, no footprint gas pedal yet. That's a good idea though. I'm going to get one in it next weekend. I hope, hopefully we'll have the foot pedal in it next weekend. But, uh, this car weighed like 3,610 pounds, but that was with like a hundred pounds of ballast. Um, I think it weighed just over 3,500 pounds with me in it with full fuel, two nitrous bottles, uh, or no, it only had one nitrous bottle. I only carried one nitrous bottle. Um, so it was heavy, and uh, it's still going to be kind of heavy. We, unfortunately, I uh, didn't have the budget to, uh... oh, wow. Yeah, so you know the feeling, man. So I didn't have the money to buy a front end or doors yet, but the whole firewall and the floorboards, everything, is all the steel is cut out of it. And we've added a bunch of tubes, but it's all chrome ollie. Um, and then we've replaced the steel with aluminum. Uh, we've moved the motor back 12 inches. We've uh, moved the driver's location back 12 inches or more. Um, we've done a lot of stuff to this car to kind of better suit what we're trying to uh, accomplish as far as uh, the racing that we do. Uh, no prep street racing kind of stuff. So, uh, kids are outside playing, but, um, so, uh, we've done a lot to hopefully try to help us with, with what we, the style of racing that we do. But, um, my question is, what do you guys think? Uh, I feel like we still probably took about 300 pounds out of the car. So let's say that it weighed, I shouldn't have to pack the ballast that I weighed before. Uh, but. Let's say it weighs 3250 with me in it. I hope it's less than that, but let's just say right now if uh full of fuel and uh 3250 uh and let's say um uh 50 50 cuz it used to be 50 50 with 100 I think I used to pack 110 pounds or 100 pounds in the trunk to get it to 50 50 exactly. Uh so what do you guys think it'll run or do you think it will run in the force uh with the big block twin turbo deal it's definitely capable i think uh i'm interested to see uh see how it runs uh, let's see here kind of blabbing along here surprised that I only got four people on here usually the guys off of uh, Facebook will usually pop on over here but like I said it was kind of a short notice I just kind of wanted to get everybody up to speed of where I was at why I haven't been posting any videos uh, number one is I've been doing some side jobs which I just I can't really get into uh, one of your brother Well, that'll happen sometimes. Is that your name on here, Travis? Hustling for eight. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's doable. Uh, I'm hoping the car is more like 52 or 53 percent on the rear since we've moved the motor location back and up and all that stuff and then move the driver's location back. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so if I can figure out if we can make it 52 to 53% with no ballast and then maybe add, uh, 50 to a hundred pounds to get it to like 54, 55%. I think it should work pretty well. Um, then obviously I got to try to 
the front set's really high still. So I'm missing quite a bit of weight off the front of the car because I don't have a radiator in it. So the radiator will now be in the trunk or in the back. It'll, it's actually not even a radiator. It's just a water water box with a water pump in it because um, it will be on methanol or whatever. So uh, the front springs are way too stiff in the car now. I'd like to get it to where it's settled down so I have way more upward travel um, to where I can get the car to release from ride height up and then hopefully the shocks that I have right now will work good enough that I can control that shock speed at first or the travel speed upwards um, to where we can get it to set back on the tire and then uh, this Link ECU has a really decent really good traction control setup it's just a uh, how's it going Russ it's just a matter of like learning how to use it I keep thinking I got something on my nose. I need to not do that. But anyways, it has a really good traction control setup in it. So, uh, but we've never really used the traction control before. We've always just kind of uh, tuned off a of drive shaft speed and videos and the data that we did have before with like Sescar. So um, hopefully we'll be able to, hopefully we'll be able to, kind of hit the ground running with this car with it being a small tire car it's a um as far as like uh you just kind of take starts to move and then you can kind of figure out where to go from there now i say that it's a little bit easier but i have never uh tuned a uh turbo car i've never even messed with one or been around one aside from like my buddy shane's car a little bit but um, all the input that I've ever had uh, or towards his car or whatever didn't work. So it will be a learning curve. Hopefully we'll be able to, like I said, kind of work through the uh, new car blues and stuff like that. But yeah, should be pretty exciting. Here, I'll show you guys where it's at right now. I'm going to put my phone real quick. Let's turn it around. It is... Uh, Uh oh, it canceled. It, it, uh, I think it lost service or something. You guys all still there? All for you? Hmm. Anyways, I was going to show you guys kind of where we're at, but Travis is here. Uh-oh. Oh, I had to sneeze. Anyways, yeah, we've just been kind of plugging away here. I uh, can't wait to get it running, but this next weekend is going to be a huge step. Uh, I got some other stuff coming up. I'm, we're going to Hawaii here in May. Uh, me and my wife and uh, some of my friends. So that should be pretty fun. That'll kind of put a hold on a little bit of stuff. We got racing starts in May, uh, which I, this car won't, I don't think it'll be done for the very first uh, no prep race for Kelly's event. It'd be kind of really tough, I feel like, to get it running. And I'm not going to take it out until it's um, happy. Yeah, I'm not going to like get it running the night before and like take it and try to race it or whatever because it's everything is new. It's more power than I'm used to. It will have more power than I'm used to and stuff like that. So I really want to kind of like get the feel for the car. It's all obviously everything is different and new on it. I want to make sure the brakes work. I want to make sure the parachute works. I want to make sure all that stuff, you know what I mean? So, um, uh, I don't think I'll have it done for May. Uh, actually, I'm pretty confident to say that I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep pecking away at it. I really want to get it done ASAP. Uh, but uh, my main goal is to be able to have it ready and rocking and rolling for July uh, for graffiti. Um, and then hopefully maybe I can con somebody in the street racing me or something uh, for graffiti. But... 
we'll see. We'll see how that deal goes, and we'll see how uh, we'll see how the budget is and all that stuff after going to Hawaii here in May. But uh, the car, all it really needs is a drive shaft, and then just uh, like like stuff that I still need to purchase. Um, Oh, gotcha. Um, so, yeah, the big things that I still need to buy is a drive shaft. One um, is the biggest deal. Uh, I still need to order push rod. So once everything is uh, everything is mounted and and the fuel tanks built and all that stuff's done, then I'll um, take the turbo side and all that stuff back off, I need to measure for push rods. As soon as I know how long the push rods need to be, I, uh, I'll try to get some money set aside for those, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. And then, uh, what else do I need? I still need a crank shaft or a uh, crank trigger kit. So that's another decent amount of money. And then, uh, that's about it. I think I got everything else to where we can make it run. Um, and uh, hopefully, like I said, hopefully we're kind of rolling along quick and not having to worry about little stupid stuff. I hope I don't hurt the motor right away. I mean, the motor was super happy when I took it apart when, I, when it was still a nitrous program. Um, aside from the last pass, I guess I did break a rocker arm, but... It ran after that. I did fire it up after I fixed the rocker arm. Um, I didn't think I did, but after thinking about it and stuff, I I did. I did fix it because I have the I have all the rocker arms and they were all set up. So now I have all brand new eight exhaust rocker arms. So hopefully I won't have any rocker arm problems. Uh, that was the only problem I ever had with this motor. Uh, it was pretty solid. Make big made. made uh, big power and uh, but I kept breaking exhaust rocker arms it was a little frustrating because uh, you know every one of those is a hundred bucks and uh, it's scary because when they break you never know what that valve was doing when it broke so anyways hold on just a second guys I got Sorry guys, I had to go help my little one. I don't know where my wife's at, but my little one was pissed off. So anyways, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I kind of lost track of what I was talking about, but that's kind of what we got going on. Uh, nothing too crazy. I'm just super excited uh, to get the ball rolling. Cause like I said, once we get the push rods, oh yeah, that's I think what I was talking about is uh, the valve train problems I was having before. Um, but the cam was so gnarly. The the camshaft that was in it when it was a nitrous program, it was like a really old style grind or whatever. So the exhaust pressure was super high. Um, and then it had a decent amount of compression too. And uh, so what was crazy is out of luck, I guess, I never had one single one break, uh, except at idle. Like if I'd fired up, like one time I fired up the first one that it broke, 
I fired it up, pulled it out in my driveway, and I was just sitting there in the car letting it warm up. And it was running, sounded rhythm, was really nice. And then all of a sudden I heard it, I, it was just like a, it was, I don't even know how to explain it. It was like a, just a tink, like a weird noise. And then it started like missing. And I just like, just reached up, shut the car off. I'm like, what the hell? And it was like brand new. Like I just got it running and it was all fresh and all that stuff. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell? And, uh, so I took it apart and obviously I had a broken rocker arm and I was like, damn it. So we, uh, it didn't hurt nothing else, but the rocker arm, I found all the material that came off the rocker arm. So we, uh, I dumped the oil out of it. We put new oil in it. I put a new rocker arm on it. I had to wait like four weeks, got a new rocker arm, put it on there, fired up, ran fine for a good amount i mean we raced a little bit here and there and then boom another one broke and then i fixed it same kind of thing i think i found all the material and then we went to a race up in washington it broke again then uh the last one that it broke it broke in a burnout at uh medford and i knew it broke and i was racing nate shawdidge or whatever and uh i i just I knew it was broken to burn out and I was like, ah, oh, it's not really missing too bad. Uh, I was hoping that it just like fell off into the, uh, into the valley there or whatever. And that's what it did. And luckily I got to make a pass, but, um, then I fixed it, got it run again. And then we decided to do this deal. And that was three years ago. So a little over three years ago, three years ago in October or September or something like that. Um, and then we took the motor out and the motor's been sitting on an engine stand uh, with no valve train on it. It's all been laxed off. And then uh, we put new uh, camshaft in it. So I changed the cam. It's still got a fair amount of compression. It's, uh, it, uh, well, I haven't pumped it yet, but it's gonna be pretty rowdy. I'm not gonna be able to kind of get too carried away with uh, a bunch of boost, I don't think, uh, just because it's, it has quite a bit of compression but we'll see we'll kind of see how things work out and uh see how happy it is and i'm just going to kind of creep up on the tune-up and hopefully it uh hopefully it works out good still no man i got four people on here not a whole lot of comments i gotta figure a way to get you guys to comment I figured Don Kalina would be on here commenting. Maybe he's one of the ones that can't comment. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> you need a beer fridge for your garage? No, I got one. I got a fridge right over there. I had to run in just a minute ago to help my little one. I had to go to the bathroom. And for some reason, I don't know what my wife's doing, but I went and helped him go potty. So what's everybody else up to tonight? I mean, it's a Saturday night. People should be working on their hot rods or hanging out with their family or doing something. I'm just, I cleaned my, tidied up my shop, kind of got the Chevelle ready to go up to Greg's next weekend. Kind of tinkered on getting some stuff uh, staged up to work on uh the nova behind me what's a cool little car pretty cool little car it's got like an 850 cage in it uh he doesn't know what motor combination he's gonna go with yet it will be like probably a nitrous program uh like a uh, he's thinking about like an aluminum small block uh should be a pretty cool little car he's moving back to texas so or not texas excuse me tennessee and uh so I'm trying to get it to where it's basically wired where um, when he gets back there, he don't have to find anybody to wire it for him or anything like that. He's pretty smart too. He'll be able to like, he'll be able to, you know, finish the wiring because there's no motor training in it. So I wasn't able to really make a wiring harness for the transmission, which is basic. It's a basic deal. I don't think he'll have any like dumps or anything on it, but 
Yeah, that's what uh, that's what I got cooking. Man, my beer fridge needs to turn down a little bit. It's a little frosty. A little ice chunks in that deal. Anyways, let's see if I'll try to turn my camera around again. Uh, but let's see here. Boom. That's All right, you guys are back. They don't like me turning out for some reason. My bad. My bad. Anyways, we've been on here about 36 minutes. Guys, unless you guys want to keep chat chitter chatting, I'll probably jump off here. I got plenty of stuff to do tonight. I just figured I'd hop on here and get everybody kind of up to speed on what we got going. Sorry, I haven't been posting videos. I've been freaking just busy working on work and uh, I haven't even had a chance to really work on my own car. How'd it go, Russ? I've always thought that truck needed to be on small tires, man. I feel like that truck is a bad unit on small tires if you can get it to work. What kind of what kind of power management program do you have, Russ? Is it a uh, do you have a grid in there or what do you have? Ten five twenty nine, good on two kits. Nice, nice. Heck yeah. Well, I'll be ready for you, graffiti. Um, let's race graffiti, Russ. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. You, uh, you run that right foot pedal with your cowboy boots better than a lot of people do. Uh, yeah, let's get it. Uh, let's get it done on a decent road, uh, graffiti weekend. What do you think? Do it for a burger and a beer. <clears throat> Sounds like a plan to me. Oh, yeah, I was going to tell a story. I think it's even in the uh, description. So, <clears throat> last weekend was a pretty fun weekend. Uh, we got uh, <clears throat> me and Greg and Seth and some other friends of ours. We kind of got a little on the buzzed up side last weekend. We uh, went to a live auction, uh, Rocky Mountain, uh, or not Rocky Mountain something that's pretty bad i don't remember what it was but i do it was a uh auction deal for that we went to and so greg ended up bidding up a just a chocolate frosting 20 dollar like costco cake up to 450 dollars on my tab or off my uh, bid number so I'm over there. I'm talking to my uncle over in a corner by the beer booth or whatever. And yeah, I can, they're, they're bidding the auctioneers going to town, you know, and I'm like, what the heck? What are they bidding on? You know? And I could see our table was over there and I could see Greg kept putting a number up and I'm like, what the hell is he bidding on? You know? Well, then they all start just busting up laughing. And I heard the uh, guy say that, you know, Trevor Hall wins this cake for $450. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? So I go flying over there. Greg bid up a freaking cake, $450 on my, on my bid number. So I guess we bought a $450 cake. Yeah, that was cool. Pretty funny deal, but it was definitely a story. Um, and I don't know if everybody was impressed with our group of friends that were there, whatever, me and Greg and Seth, but we had a good time. Uh, we, me and Greg and Seth, we ended up, yeah, we drank way too much, but it was fun. I mean, you got to do that every once in a while. Lay your hair down. So, yeah, Seth or Greg ended up buying a $450 cake, um, and we, uh, I ended up bringing it home, and we ate it all throughout this week or whatever, me and my kids and my wife or whatever, we had a little piece of cake here and there. And 
Pretty funny though. <clears throat> Pretty funny story. I was hoping Greg Greg was busy. He's working on a Cess fifty six Chevy, so uh, he wasn't able to get on here tonight. But um, like I said, this was kind of a last minute deal. I've been I wasn't even planning on going live until uh, until I got the Chevelle back in. I was just kind of sitting here bored, and I was like, you know, let's get on here and let everybody know why I haven't been on here much. And now we're just having a couple beers and telling lies, I guess. <clears throat> I'm excited for Russ to be on small tires. That's gonna be a that'll be a good race, Russ. <clears throat> do you think you're close to as fast as you were on big tires on your small tires, Russ, or what do you think? Cause you ran those, you ran those uh, kind of cheater tires anyway, didn't you? Run those, uh, you always ran those Hoosier Quick Times or whatever, Quick Pros or whatever the hell they were. Which are a weird compound to begin with. I think they work good if they're brand new for like ten passes, but anything after that, I feel like they get a little hairy. I mean, that's what I noticed. Even when my car only made you know four or five hundred horsepower. Maybe a little better on smalls. Hell yeah. You got a draggy yet, Russ? Um, <clears throat> I noticed those, you know, when I was bracket racing and we'd buy them. I actually have a set of them. Uh, they're full of water out in my yard right now. Um, they need to get, I need to get rid of them somehow. I've always kept them around because they were like, a, I think they called them a 29, 13, 5 or whatever. good yeah the draggies are good data i mean we've uh we've compared them to time slips several times and they're always really close a mile an hour uh the mile an hour seems like it's pretty close and it, it's it's definitely good data for sure it's kind of cool to see how uh how you know fast you go on a street or whatever and it gives you pretty darn good i think the the thing that's off a little bit is we've noticed with Sescar, Sescar never 60 foot's that great. Uh, I think it's a 60 foot that uh, that seems a little off. It always shows that he's 60 foot and a little bit better than he is. But aside from that, yeah, those draggies are a good deal. That's a good deal. I got one now. The way that I got it into my car, I have it like wired into my car. Yeah, it is really accurate. I mean, we've compared it to time slips at Coos Bay, uh, and we've compared it to time slips at Medford. They're they're uh, they're pretty darn close. I mean, within within hundredth, they're not they're not, it's not like it's a humongous swing or difference, but uh, it works pretty good. But now I have it kind of wired in where I have a USB port where it'll charge whenever uh, the battery's on in my car. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then, like I said, we built this car to street race, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'll do a little bit of no prep racing with, uh, the foundation and stuff like that. But aside from that, I'll test it to track here and there just to kind of get a handle on maybe a boost ramp or anything like that. But aside from that, I'm going to, I'm going to hopefully be running, racing on the street as stupid and silly as that sounds but that's kind of why i built the car i've always i've always liked the street stuff uh more um for some reason i don't really know why i mean i shouldn't want a street race as much as i do but there's just something about letting go of the button on the street uh and i'm safe about it i'm I feel like like every race that I've ever like put on or anything like that, I feel like is is as safe as you can be on the street. Um, but uh, I I wear my jacket, I wear my helmet, I wear everything that I would wear at the racetrack. I wear when I make a lick on the street, and I always I always have since I've you know since the car's been fast to where it could get out from underneath you. You know, I mean. I feel like I'm a pretty good driver, but you never know. It's like, just like Greg, when Greg wrecked, I feel like Greg's pretty good hand. Uh, I feel like he can drive pretty good. And uh, 
I feel like the Nova, he just kind of overdrove it and it just got out from underneath him. And there's nothing you can do about that when it gets that far out of shape. So, like I said, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully the street stuff will still work. Hopefully there'll be some street races. Now I'm, I'm really worried about now since we've cut the firewall out of this car, I'm worried. I see a bunch of rules now that you got to have a stock firewall and it's like, God oh, damn it. You know, because it never was a rule before and I feel like it's probably that rule will probably be short lived because um, there's so many cars that were built before that rule came about. Um, so I'm hoping that that stock firewall rule is kind of outdated and gone because I would really like to be able to go to some of them races, especially down in California or. Uh, you know, every once in a while, if we can afford it, go to Vegas or Arizona, um, and then even back east, you know, back east would be a blast. I've always wanted to go like warm the woods and then the whole way over there, try to round up some street races or whatever would be a good time. <sighs> Just tell her. <I'm> <laughs> yeah. And, uh. No, it's, it's, uh, that's kind of my goal is to go, go do as much street racing and, and racing as I can when this car's done. Uh, it kind of, I kind of went a little extreme. I'm not going to be able to run this car by myself anymore. I used to be able to pretty much run it by myself. So I'd have a battery charger. I'd charge the battery. I'd, uh, and then. Uh, I'd be able to turn the nitrous on and everything by myself and all that stuff, but it's to be able to turn this car in between rounds. I feel like, you know, getting it kind of up in the air, get fans under it, all that stuff. I'm going to definitely have to have a little bit of help. Uh, my brother, my brother's willing to help. Um, Burkhart, my buddy Shane's, he's going to help. I, I think I'll be able to find some help, but it's just going to be a little bit different now because I've always kind of done it on my own and just a little bit of help with that from Seth and uh, my wife and stuff like that. But it'll be a, it'll be a little different. <clears throat> Somebody asked me the other day what the banners are up there, the Budweiser banner. And yeah, they're Budweiser and like, a bunch of weird banners those have been up here since i lived here i rent this place here and that all that stuff's always been up there since i've lived here so i'm not a budweiser guy i don't drink budweiser or nothing but it is what it is i mean don't bother me lacy was wanting me to take them down we had a new year's party a few years back and she's like you need to take those down i'm like i don't care <clears throat> oh man so is the audio still good and stuff guys god we're up on an hour that's what sucks about these live feeds guys is like they go especially when you know i don't have a whole lot of followers yet so the people that are on here are just kind of randoms or my friends that are already just you know know what's going on but um hopefully once i get a little bit of fun i like to answer questions i like that i like the bench race um, sounds good i like the bench race and stuff like that it's a good time um so these live feeds are always fun to just kind of get caught up with people and, and uh, they can always go back and watch them and it helps my channel and uh like i said i've been kind of slacking Kind of not really because I've been so busy, but uh, some things are coming down the pipeline as far as like uh, content. Uh, Shane's going to be working on getting a truck. Uh, he's going to build a little uh, um, like a 2000 to 2015 ish uh, 
short bed Chevy pickup, like LS turbo deal. Matter of fact, he already has the turbo and stuff like that. So um, that's going to be kind of a cool little project. I'll be able to, I'll probably put as much uh, content as I can out with that. That should be pretty fun. We'll be doing some highway burnouts and shit like that. But um, yeah, we'll be kind of working, working through all that stuff. The kids, my son's friend is here, and those two are out running amok around the house right now, around my shop, which is weird. My son doesn't go outside normally, but when his little girlfriend's over here, <clears throat> they're always out terrorizing the yard. I wish I could turn the phone around and show you guys kind of what I got going on. The car is 99% wired. I need, it, I need to terminate the uh, cam sync. Uh, the, uh, just so you guys know, I'll break it down. But I need to terminate the cam sync, the crankshaft sensor, um, the fuel pressure sensor, the dome pressure sensor, and then uh, what else? Man, I oh uh, line lock. I really want to get the line lock on it. What else? God, I think as far as wiring goes, that's it. Yeah, I think that's all I got left as far as the wiring stuff goes. So, like I said, next weekend's gonna be a humongous step forward. It's gonna be like the exhaust will be done, the little bull horns will be done. And just so you guys know, I was going to go out of the uh, fender down low, close to the door. And, uh, but the way that the turbos are mounted, we decided, or I've decided, that we're going to just 90 them around. And they're going to actually come out of the front of the fender. So they'll be kind of like how uh, Beater Bomb's car is, Joey's car. And they'll kind of come out of both sides down on a 70 Chevelles down where the marker lights are uh, and they'll just kind of come up and I'm just going to have a slight little upward bullhorn and call it good because if I was to go all the way out of the fender it would take another probably $300 worth of uh, material to get it there and then welding and pie cut and this and that and all that bullshit I feel like just elbow it around, go right out of the front of the fender. Aside from the weight being forward, I feel like it's going to be much easier and much faster to do. And I think it looks cool. It'll look neat out there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just kind of move forward with that. And then also I'll be able to, without being <clears throat> turned and out of the way like that, I won't have to take the exhaust off to service the spark plugs or anything like that. So, uh, what I was going to have to do the way we were originally planning on doing it is it was going to come up over the A-arm and then dump down and then come out of the fender, like I said, down by the door. Well, that would just completely just block off any access to the spark plugs unless you jacked it up and went up from underneath, which might be the way you, oh, I'm going to have to do it. I don't know. But uh, I feel like if we can turn it out and go out of the front of the fender, It'll look cool. It'll kind of go through and then it'll kind of like roll up and then hide up, tuck up underneath the fender and then roll out. It'll look pretty cool. I kind of already have an idea, so I ordered all the rest of the material for that. Um, so hopefully, um, hopefully for next weekend, I'll have all that stuff where we can get kind of rocking and rolling right away with that. But should be pretty cool. Well, I've held like four people. It's probably the four people that keep commenting. <laughs> My brother, Shane, and Russ. And that Mike Taylor guy. Which I might know who you are, Mike. I'm sorry. They, it kind of sucks. Not all the YouTube people. I'm not sure. It's kind of, a, kind of weird. I don't... I could know who you are, and I probably do, so don't take offense. 
I'm surprised my dad ain't on here. I'm surprised there's a lot of ain't, a lot of people. Getting on here, but so I got all the injectors, I got all that stuff. Seth hooked me up with that. Like I said, um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but guys, I'm fucking so thankful for all the people that have helped me build this car. Uh, I mean, number one, Greg, I and I could have not done any of it without Greg. I mean, the <clears throat> I mean, I can weld a roll cage in a car with a wire welder, and it'll be okay, just like it was before. And it'll be just okay. It'll be an average car. But this car, I guys, I can't wait for you to see it. The tin work is, it's okay. <laughs> it's like it's like my my fabricating skills. It's like okay, but the uh, the cage around it is beautiful. All the welds are just really sweet it's all chrome molly uh and it's all tig welded yeah it's kind of it kind of sucks that and i didn't like i said shane i wasn't expecting a big following tonight hopefully this will just kind of hopefully i'll get some views after i'll just post this on um and produce it on so it's just like a regular video and hopefully i'll get some people to watch it hopefully help with my uh watch hours and all that stuff but um anyways like i said man without all my buddies and uh helping me and kind of keeping me motivated and uh yeah and then obviously like my family and stuff like that uh I spent like two and a half months out in the shop every night after work, working on the things that I could work on, like as far as the floor and all the tin work and mountain and mountain tabs and mountain boxes and wiring and doing all this shit. Um, so that took time away from that. So anyways, long story short, it's been kind of a, uh, or a short story long, whatever. Um, it's been kind of a long going process, but I couldn't do it without all of my buddies, Seth and Greg and uh, Shane. Uh, Shane's came over and he's helped me uh, with the tin work and stuff. Sometimes he's just, you know, sometimes he's just here to keep me company. You know, he helped me put the wheel tubs in here. He shot me some ideas. Uh, so it's been great. It's been great. All my buddies definitely come through and help. And, uh, you can't do it without your friends. But now I'm super excited. Now I gotta get ready to race Russ because Russ ain't no punk. So I might have to I might have to talk Russ into give me like the back tire or something. Because he's uh Russ's a heavy hitter. I haven't seen or hide or hear of Russ though here lately, so Maybe he, uh, maybe he forgot how to street race. I know you're still on here, Burkhart. Let's get, let's get Russ all revved up. Maybe <laughs> Russ is legit fire. Yes, he is. Let's get him revved up though, because God, that'd be a fun race, man. <laughs> that'd be a fun race. I've always liked Russ. I, so I'm trying to think. I remember I remember Russ from a while ago, but when that I remember Dustin Canoy talking about um, Russ's truck, and I think it was like right after Russ got it. I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Russ had it for a long time, but I think Dustin was talking about it one time and. Uh, it was when Seth was kicking everybody's ass and like doing really good and and stuff and and I remember telling Dustin, uh, yeah, no shit, that yeah, he's got three twenty seven my ass, maybe a three fifty seven on the hip, but I guarantee you he's got over four hundred under the hood of that thing. But um, yeah, I remember telling Dustin, hey, you know what? Let's get let's get a Let's get Russ lined out and uh, race the Nova. And 
And then I don't, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think when. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And 4,000 pounds, right, Russ? I'm trying to think the first time I remember seeing that truck run. And I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I think it might have been our cash days that we did. I think it was. Okay, I think it was the cash days that Seth ended up winning. and uh, But Russ used all of his fucking lane. And like it was like professional. And I don't remember who he raced. And sorry, Russ, I'm terrible about memory. Yes, it was. So I don't remember who you raced. If it was, it might have been Darren or Chad. I think it might have been Chad. And Chad just made a little bit cleaner pass. And I think, and fuck, I could be wrong, but I remember going, holy shit, the cowboy can drive. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of like Talladega Nights, you know? Uh, the Frenchie can drive, you know, kind of deal. I remember thinking, holy shit, he's boogieing. And then uh, that was the first time, and I was like, holy smokes, you know what I mean? Um, but then we, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I invited him to, you know, it wasn't all me, but I invited him to Vegas to come race for our group, you know what I mean? And he he actually called out um, Old Heavy. He called out JJ and Old Heavy and, and raced him. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, Russ, you always ran those street tires, those fucking Hoosier ET streets or whatever the heck they're called. I got a set of them out here, literally. Like, I got to figure a way to get rid of them. They're garbage because they've been up in my attic and then I just threw them out in the yard and now they're full of water. But, uh, yeah, you run those shitty tires forever. But, no, you... You definitely, I had no problem uh, inviting you, um, Quick Time Pros, yeah. I had no problem inviting you to Vegas. And I know what was gangster as hell is Russ drove all the way down there as an alternate. He wasn't even for sure in the race. And then he got to Vegas. He didn't give a shit about anything but racing somebody. So I made some phone calls and we ended up getting a side race. So Russ was legit off camera racing people on a side road in Las Vegas before we even went on the show. So that was pretty cool. It was really cool actually. And, uh, I, I think, um, he raced Richie and his S 10 pickup, I think. If I remember right, and I think Richie just had a better tune-up for that road. Obviously, it was his road. Um, and then I remember you were running like that nano uh, system back then, uh, Russ. And mark my mark me if I'm wrong or whatever or whatever it's called, where you like run a ton of pressure. And I remember the fucking your nitrous pressure was through the roof. And we were putting ice on your freaking uh, bottles and stuff like that. And, uh, but no, that was, that was a good time. That was a real good time. That was fun. That was definitely, uh, that was definitely a good time for sure. Anyways, guys, unless you guys want to keep talking, I don't have a problem. Been on here an hour and four minutes. I don't really want to drag them on too long because uh, they just kind of get, I don't know. I know the same four people are on here. I've already heard all the same stories, but. Anyways, that's what I got going on, guys. We're going up to Greg's next weekend. We're going to get this deal, uh. Um, one step closer or probably if we can get everything done that we need to get done next weekend, it'll be, it'll be a lot closer. The fuel cell is a big deal. Cause now I can then plumb the fuel system. I can, 
oh, plumb all the uh, CO2 lines for the wastegates and the blow off valves and do all that stuff, I can then, uh, the transmission lines and all that stuff are already ran uh, to a bulkhead in the back of the car. And so then I'll just need to make uh, two short little lines that go from the transmission cooler and the tank in the back to the bulkheads. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I still, which I have all the stuff, I just need to make it. I still need to make the oil feed line for the driver's side turbo. I already have the one made for the passenger side turbo. Um, I still need to do a little bit of wiring here and there, like I said earlier. And then uh, I need to take the turbo, the uh, uh, turbo housing apart and drill and tap for um, an eighth inch uh, push lock fitting, 90 degree fitting. So I can uh, go from the charge side of the turbo to the underneath side of the uh, wastegate. Um, so it has a positive, a positive pressure there. Um, that helps, that helps a lot. So I'm going to do that. And then, uh, what else? I got all the fuel regulate. Man, I got, I feel like I got everything. I already have my guys with Link already called and built a startup tune up for me. So hopefully we'll get it fired up. Hopefully I'll be able to tinker around, get it running decent enough uh, to either test on the street or get it on the dyno um, or take it somewhere and test or whatever. But yeah, we're uh, we're working in the right direction with this bad boy, and I can't wait. I got uh, the TPS sensor. Um, it's supposed to be here with the rest of the exhaust stuff that I ordered. So once that's done, and once I uh, get all that little stuff, I mean, the TPS is wired. It just has to be plugged in. I mean, I I feel like I'm way ahead of what I need to do. And, uh, yeah, just excited to hear it run, man. As soon as I hear it run, my motivation will skyrocket. Everything will, I mean, like I said, I don't know if you, any of you guys have ever built a car from scratch, but doing the brakes, doing the fuel system, doing everything, all that stuff. I mean, it definitely is overwhelming, um, but I feel like it's for the best. This car should be pretty sweet when it's done, I hope. Um, but anyways, guys, like I said, I've rattled on enough, I think. Hopefully everybody uh, kind of enjoyed this little recap video and a little story about Greg racking up a $450 cake. Anyways. Uh, next weekend video should be pretty cool. I'll uh, video kind of the update on what Seth's uh, 56 Chevy hardtop uh, or post. I mean, uh, I'll kind of update that. I'll update what we got going on with this bad boy. Uh, kind of vlog as we go along. Uh, maybe do a time lapse of Greg welding some cool shit together. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, we'll see you guys next time.